relationships create a place of refuge. A refuge is a place I can run to, confide myself in. I can get comfort, my fears also stilled, or even at times my need cut and for. We have really different relationships, and the reason why we are always proud to have them, it is because we can always turn to the people we are in in that relationship in our time of need. Does your relationship with God create a place of refuge for you? Psalms 23 verses 1 to 6 ESV the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me you are old and staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever this is one of the relationship that we have with God. And David says, the Lord is my shepherd. That turns David into a sheep of God so that God can become one who can relate with him as a shepherd. It's a metaphor describing the relationship that God had with David or David was viewing God from he says the Lord is my shepherd therefore I shall not want David's lack of want is a consequence of the relationship he has with God does God's relationship with you have a consequence that takes away fear, that takes away your need, that takes away your lack. Because until it is so, then your relationship with God is not yet creating a place of refuge for you. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. His lack of wants is the result of God being his shepherd and David accepting God as his shepherd and David submitting as one that is shepherded, one whose needs are catered for, one who is to be led, one who is to be given direction. David yields as a sheep and David says, I shall not want and he gives us the reason why he will not want. The first reason is verses 2. He says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. His physical needs are catered for to the extent that there is satisfaction. And not only physical needs, but also the spiritual needs. The physical hunger and the spiritual hunger. God cannot cater for physical hunger yet fail to meet spiritual need for those ones who are in a relationship with him that is not broken that is not fractured god being in a whole some relationship in a healthy relationship in a relationship that is sound cannot cut off for physical need yet fail to meet the spiritual need he cannot meet the physical aspects of the needs that we have. 
yet fail to touch what our soul, what the inner man, what the mind needs. David says, he makes me to lie down. And look at that, not to eat, but to lie down. He takes me to a point of satisfaction. Because the sheep that is satisfied is the sheep that can lie down. But unsatisfied sheep does not lie down. It is always feeding. But David says he makes me. So he brings me to a point of satisfaction. In Psalm chapter 16, there is that place that David says, I shall be satisfied as with the marrow. God, he satisfies us. And then he leads me beside still waters. He leads me to a point where I can get a water that quenches both the physical and the spiritual need. Jesus himself says, All you who are thirsty, come to me and I will give you living waters. And we have only one Lord in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4. Who is the Lord? Jesus. And Jesus himself, he says, I am the good shepherd in the book of John chapter number 10. So one who caters for our need, for the physical and the spiritual, is Jesus. And the second reason why David says he shall not want is this. He leads me. No, he restores my soul. And then he leads me in the paths of righteousness. He first restores my soul. Before leading me, he restores. A soul that is fainting is always easy to rebel. And God does not want a rebellious man. He does not want to lead people who are bound to rebel. So he first restores the soul. He brings it to a point that it is satisfied. He brings it to a point that its strength is renewed. He brings it to a point where all weariness is taken away. And how does God do that? By God making us to lie down in green pastures and leading us beside still waters. Because until we are satisfied, then the soul cannot be restored. Until the soul is first fed, then the soul's strength cannot be renewed. Until the needs of the man are met, that man cannot be restored. He is ever fainting. But God takes us to a point that we no longer faint by meeting our needs. And then after he has restored us, after he has taken us away from that point of fainting, then he leads us. God does not lead people who are fainting. Because the ones that are fainting are so hard to be led. Ones that are fainting easily give up, easily become hopeless, easily give up the ghost of their faith. And when we give up the ghost of your faith, then you no longer please God for him to lead you. So God does his part, restoring your soul. Then he leads. And where does he lead us? In the paths of righteousness. In the paths of right standing with God. In paths whereby I can do acts of righteousness. And why does God lead me in the path of righteousness? For his name's sake. For the honor of his name. It is his name that is at stake. When the animals of a shepherd stray, it is that it is the name of that shepherd that is at stake. If, for example, his sheep stray away to someone's farm, it is the name 
of that shepherd that shall be drowned in mud it is him who people shall say he does not know to take care of his flock and so god knows that his name is a stake his honor is a stake so god leads us to a place where by his name cannot be insulted he does not do it because we are righteous he does not do it because we are obedient he does not do it because we are good no it is for the sake of his name he is jealous for his name so because of the jealousy that god has for his name then god does what is good for us remember moses story those times that god who destroyed the children of israel then moses would go and intercede and tell god god you have obtained a name by redeeming these people from the land of egypt and doing wonders if you are going to destroy them then it is the honor of your name that is going to be defamed by the nations they will say that you are not able to sustain them so you destroy them and god seeing that his name now is at stake he forgave them and he would relent from his anger so god does what is good for us for his name's sake he does not want anyone to drown his name in the mud so he does what is good and now david says because he leads me in the paths of righteousness even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me you are rod and your staff they comfort me even though contrary to my expectation contrary to god's promises contrary to my faith contrary to my belief there are those times that things happen contrary to how i have believed there are those times the situations are contrary to god's promises but even in that contrast david says god is still with me and he says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death there is that contrast because when i ex- when i know that god is leading me then i expect light because god is a sun and god himself he is the light but then here david says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death a valley where there is complete darkness that black and deep darkness is what david calls the valley of the shadow of death he says even when i get into those circumstances that are contrary to how i have believed on god yet in that contrast god is with me my the contrastness of my situation to my faith to my belief does not cancel out the presence of god he is there in the book of isaiah 53 verses 2 the bible says even though you walk through the waters they shall not overflow you and through the fire they shall not burn you for i am with you those moments that are contrary to god's word to god's presence in our lives are there and some of them will never be solved because we were supposed to go through them there are some problems that will never be solved because we were supposed to go through them so there is no solution for them the solution for them is us going through them the solution for the valley of the shadow of death is not god becoming the light it is us going through them with god's presence and david now says i will fear no evil there are those things in your life that you are going to ask god to take away to bring a solution but god will never bring a solution because it was a path 
for you to go through. And paths will never have a solution. The only solution is for you to go through them. And God's presence is there. David says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What comforts us from the fear is the presence of God. And look at how that presence works. And the means of that presence working to allay away our fears. To comfort us from all fears. His raw and staff. God's road and staff can only work in His presence. The things of God are effective when God is there. The things of God create positive results in our life when in the presence of God only. We only benefit from the things of God when we are in the presence of God. But that moment we stray away from the presence of God, though we have the things of God, they no longer benefit us to that extent that they could benefit us while we are in the presence of God. David says, for you are with me. His presence is there. When his presence is there, then his word, which is the road and the staff, bring us the comfort. And then, another reason why David shall not want, it is because he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, my cup overflows. That can be summed up as God bringing us to a position of honor. He brings us to a point that we are honored. He prepares a table. I become his guest. And in the presence of my enemies. Your enemies is not your fellow man. Your enemy is not that witch doctor in your village. Your enemy is not that boss who is always bossing himself around you. Your enemy is the devil and his and, and his physic his spiritual authorities the angels that rebel together with him the bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 that our war is not against flesh and blood so god is not preparing you a table so that your fellow human beings who hate you may see. He prepares a table before you so that the devil can see that God's presence is with you, that God is your shepherd. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup runs over. Your cup running over is the consequence of God's anointing you with the oil. And now David says, surely goodness and mercies. Because David has seen all this goodness that are resulting from God becoming his shepherd. He has now come to a point of assurance. There's that song that says, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. It is my relationship with God that brings me to a position of having a blessed assurance, bringing me to a point of tasting the good things of God. And now David says, because God is my shepherd and I shall not want, and now he has enumerated the goodness and the mercies of God, he now says, surely, He has now the certainty. He has now the surety that God is his shepherd. He shall not want. He has the grounds. Now he has enumerated those grounds. He has told us the grounds. He has now come to that point of confidence. Does your relationship with God 
make you to have that confidence that you can say now the goodness and the mercies of God shall follow me they shall pursue me from behind and they are going to overtake me and then you make the choice that every sheep now must make to dwell in the place that God has appointed for them and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life does your relationship with God bring you to an oasis of comfort bring you to a point that you see God as a refuge is your relationship with God creating that place of refuge for you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.